Recently, we got a comment on YouTube, and the comment read, why is everybody so wrapped up in arms about primary stability? And I think the answer is, is that initially, when we were first doing dental implants back, you know, two decades ago, three decades ago, when we, when we were first starting, the number one challenge was, is can we, can we get an implant to integrate? Okay, so you look at the early reports, and the early reports were always centered around integration. And you have to understand that the, that the first engineer, the, the first implantologists that were doing this, you know, the Brandemark time frame and, and the Carl Mesh time frame, they didn't have the evidence. So those pioneers that were, were leading the way were, were, were setting the bar for us, right? They, did, they didn't have the answers they were looking for. So a prudent way to approach that would be to err on a conservative approach. And a conservative approach would be, I know that if I have micro movement, if I have small movements around my implant during the healing phase, I will get epithelial and growth. I'll get, I'll get, it won't integrate. And so there was a lot of in, in, interest early on in terms of, hey, we've got to do a really good job of getting primary stability. Now, the interesting thing is, is that over the years, the metric that we've leaned on to do that has been the, the value of torque. Okay, so torque is a measurement of a bending moment in engineering, basically how much rotational force is necessary to, to make something move. Okay, so think about what I just said and think about how does that relate to stability because the answer is it doesn't. It's, it's what we've had in the past, but torque is a terrible metric for stability. And let me just start off by saying this. If I took an old dental implant that did not have threads on it and it was a press fit implant and I press that implant into the bone, what torque did I have? Well, there's zero. That's right. We had zero torque and yet those implants integrated. So all of a sudden, like you say, oh my God, he's right. There, there were implants that integrated with zero torque and you can have a spinner today. So you place an implant into bone and it's an autogenous bone, and the last, when you put the implant in, it's, it has zero torque because it's spinning in the hole, and you can leave it, and oftentimes, it will integrate. Why? Well, number one, when it's spinning in the hole, the material that's in the flutes is autogenous bone. It's the gold standard for bone grafting. So it's, it's not a a particulate that you've added. It's not an allograft or a xenograft. It's it's their bone with all the osteoinductive and osteoconductive mechanisms necessary to grow bone. So it's like the best place to grow bone. And then the question is, is that you've got a spinner. And if you took the driver off the spinner, could you grab it with your fingers and wiggle it? And the answer is no. It's down in the bone. So how is it going to have movement? You put a, a, a healing cap on it and, and bury it. How does it have movement? It's, it, 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 the only way that it has movement is in a rotational direction along the long axis of the threaded rod. All the other dimensions, all other five dimensions, okay, three positional and three, three rotational dimensions, all, other fi all the other five are stable. The only one you don't have stability in is, is in the direction of the insertion, the rotational, for, the rotational degree of freedom around the axis of, of insertion is the only one. So you got five out of six. So that's pretty amazing. So I oftentimes have these conversations with people and, and they're like, wow, you know, I never really thought of it that way. And, and the reason why I really get rather animated about this is because people are starting to build up um, workflows based on torque. So you may do an all on X case and you may have a cumulative torque value, right? So you, you're going to add up the values of the torque of the individual implants. So let's say you're placing four implants and your threshold is 30 Newton centimeters. And so four times 30 is 120. So somebody will teach you, if you don't reach 120 Newton centimeters cumulative on your, on your insertion torques of all four, you can't load the case. And I'm just like, what? That is, a, that is just the craziest thing I've ever heard because we have never ever not loaded a case. We haven't done a single all on X case in my entire career where the patient hasn't walked out with the screw retained teeth that day ever. And, and I'm 
not making this up. It's just I don't subscribe to the concept of cumulative torque because I understand what torque is. Torque is compression of bone, period. That's all it is. It's the bone pushing back on the, on the screw, which creates friction between the, the, the surface of the screw, which is the implant, and the bone. That's all it is. So what you're really measuring is compression of the bone, not stability. I'll give you another example. I went into a fresh extraction socket with a wide implant. In that wide implant, when I seated it inside the guide, was only two millimeters away from being at the bottom of the hole, at the bottom of the socket, before I turned on the rotation device, the motor. So I know that that thread was only going to engage two threads. It torqued out at 70 newton centimeters with two threads. Okay? So it went around twice, and it went beep, and it hit 70 newton centimeters, but 80% of my, 80 of my implant was in air. 80% of it was in the socket. Only two threads, but I got 70 newton centimeters. So I have an enormous amount of torque on that case, right? But I hope everyone would understand that I didn't have great stability. I only had two threads engaging bone. Well, that's like holding your, 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 your glass. Let's say you have a, a tall glass and you hold the glass at the very bottom of the glass with two fingers and you just squeeze really hard, okay? That's not nearly as stable as wrapping the glass with all five fingers in the middle and holding it moderately. So having five fingers or five threads engaging your implant or your glass of your favorite beverage is going to be more stable than having one thread. So it starts to take form in the, in the way of where we came up with the five thread guideline, which says that if you have five threads, you're all but certain to have high primary stability, not measured by torque, but just it will integrate. And so we're in the process of finishing the second paper after the first one was issued. As a theory, the second one is, is, is actually data and I'm here to tell you guys the data is spectacular as a, as a sneak preview. When it comes out, it's going to be hard to believe that it's actually as predictive as it is. But it's an enormous tool to predict primary stability. And in today's workflow, when we can do so many things with the tools we have, we need that ability to predict primary stability. And just remember, it's not based on torque. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the Smile Engineer, helping you re-engineer your practice.